Hi, Sonika. Hi, Carl. How are you? Very good. Very good to connect again. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for making time to listen to us. Uh, I am Carl Muller, and I work for Visa. And one of the key things that I have to work with communities with around financial education. And today, with Sonika, who has done a lot of work in that space, as had a personal experience, we want to have a conversation, and I hope you'll join us as well. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sonika. I am a 12th grader at Parkland High School in Pennsylvania, the United States, and um, I've been involved with financial literacy and I gave a TED talk on it. So hopefully we can bring that, build that awareness more about this topic through our conversation today. Yeah, what's also interesting is that we have been granted space on WISE platform and WISE has been mm -hmm. a very good partner in promoting education generally, but also financial education, um, or let's say financial literacy for that matter. And there are a few awards that they actually given to some organization. You guys want to go and probably check out um, Barefoot College, the Student Bank Project, and some of the others that are around there. So, um, Tanika, I watched your TED talk, and it was interesting for me to hear about the personal experience that shaped the way mm -hmm. you're thinking about financial education and why you think this is important. You know, can you tell me more how things have evolved since then? So for me personally, I'm very passionate about financial literacy. Um, a few years ago, when the pandemic first started, I um, developed my own organization known as Money Matters. And through that, I was working with my younger brother and we taught financial literacy and we um, taught personal finance to students in our local community. And um, the reason that we wanted to do this originally was because we were so fortunate that um, even from a young age, our parents um, would like start teaching us about these concepts. But we realized that not everyone has access to these things, um, this education, and we really recognized the importance of this in um, like the global society. So we wanted to start with um, our local community and then expand outward. So when the opportunity for a TED talk came up, um, I knew I wanted to do it on this and build that awareness. So um, like two of like the main points that I mentioned throughout the whole thing was the importance of being aware and being proactive. And I truly stand by those. I think um, it's so important that um, people are aware of the importance of financial education, of, of bringing it to their communities, of expanding it to communities that they might not be a part of, and um, being proactive about learning it and teaching others, because ultimately we want a globally financial secure um, community. So that's the eventual goal of well, um, um, Thank you for that. You know, when I, I was in Doha um, a couple of days ago, on Sunday actually, and uh -huh. this whole concept of your money, your future, and the importance of financial education. We're discussing right. a group of yeah. about 25 um, educators from, maybe from Bangladesh to Bolivia, talking about this mm -hmm. particular issue for children, that street-connected children. And one of the things that came out for me was, how do we talk about the future with street connected children. So if you bring them the concept about personal right. finance management and what are, why it's important in terms of the skills, it's really about the future. So when you think exactly. about it, is there something that you may give us an advice to someone who is only thinking about today because of the personal yeah. circumstances? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what a lot of us like to tend to focus on is just the present day circumstances and what we're facing right now. But it's so important to think about the future. And the future is obviously the young generation today. It's kids um, just like me, you know, um, I am still in school. So I'm still part of that phase. And I think it's so important to start that education from a young age because it impacts you even like as soon as you um, like go to college if you choose to do that or when you go into the workforce or like you have your you build your own career it affects you every step of the way and there's just no way that you can get out of um, like the financial 
like world itself because it's just integrated into your life and people don't really realize that earlier on and that's when like they start talking about it thinking about it later and that just creates a problem because now you're in this like you're just within that financial world knee deep into it but now you really don't know how to navigate it so if we taught students earlier from a younger age um, even from like as young as like elementary school students, then we could start building those foundational skills early and then help them grow into being a part of that financial world. Yes, but then whose role is it to educate about personal finances? In your TED talk, you talk about your, your, your parents being very much present in doing that. Some people may not be that fortunate. Mm -hmm. So schools, friends, peers, who has this responsibility, in your view? If I then look at um, whose responsibility it is, it really depends. For children that don't necessarily grow in a home where this is being taught, there might be a challenge, but it's probably the responsibility of a community as a whole. And when people have, don't necessarily have lots of resources, they make those decisions actually every day. So the level of financial literacy will probably be high, not necessarily the way we can assess it, but making those decisions on a daily basis is a very critical one. When it comes to schools, we're connecting then that to policymakers, to other institutions, because the school curriculum is set usually by the government and some private school may have some leeway to introduce electives for example but overall it's really about the environment in which we are and the responsibility of those that have the skills and knowledge to be able to impart them on others it cannot be just about what you learn at school you know money is very critical in many things that we want to do but at the same time understanding the value of money is probably a very key skill to have very simple skill could be around the understanding of compound interest and that ability to leave small amount of money to grow over time. It means that there's an element about patience that is key to have. So patience, ability to learn, network, parents. Is it the role of banks or financial institution? Certainly. This answer is pretty much separated into two main parts. Uh, the first one is that parents have a responsibility and the other is that the education systems and teachers have a responsibility of educating students about personal finance. Um, as we grow up, we learn a lot from our parents and I think they have that initial responsibility of setting up that foundation in us, of learning basic uh, money management skills, you know, saving, budgeting, uh, wants versus needs, those basic things. And um, after that, as students start going to school, I think it's the responsibility of teachers to really grow upon that foundation, really get into more financial literacy concepts and start educating the students. And as a student myself, um, who spends half her day at school, half her day at home, pretty much, um, I think it's really important to get that dual learning environment to learn about financial literacy. Yeah, I think that's a pretty hard question to answer because um, it's, it's just so, so broad, you know, um, it, there's a lot of social context around building that, um, bridging that digital divide that exists between the Western world and the Eastern world and different countries as a whole. But um, I think that to an extent, it also requires a lot of like investment into education, investment to resources and building those underdeveloped regions so that they have that infrastructure and that technology to provide that financial education and also like in general education to um, the children in that area. And I actually, I was like researching this um, earlier and um, I came across like this concept of digital literacy and it's not just 
like having access to internet or having access to digital resources. It's being able to use them, being able to understand them and being able to create with them um, that really makes you digitally literate. So I think that's something that even I see like in my community, um, I know a lot of school districts in my area, they've been trying to like bridge that digital gap by setting spots, giving students um, like mobile hotspot for their homes or um, like giving them like connecting devices and things like that. So I think just and that investment towards the digital divide. And only when you do that can you provide that um, the rest of the knowledge that needs to be given to students. Yeah. I'll add to this though, when there's no access to data or internet for that matter, mm -hmm. the good old offline solution of having a book or having someone to come to the community to deliver that knowledge can still be applied. Right. Um, and that is something that we can see in different parts of the world. And, and it's not a develop, developing nation sort of issue. Many parts of the world just don't have access. Some of us, of course, uh, are more in, in certain parts of the world. So yeah, using that is very, very important. So let's look at boys and girls. You talk about your younger brother and how you were getting a little bit annoyed when he was getting the answers in your TED talk, TEDx talk. Do you see a difference between boys and girls when it comes to financial literacy? And is there anything that you think that can be used to change that or improve that uh, understanding of financial education? To answer this question, I don't think that boys and girls are equal when it comes to financial literacy or even education in general. I think there are more numbers of boys that have access to education and access to financial education than girls across the globe. Um, just as a number, I think 30% of women worldwide are financially literate and there's definitely more boys out there that are financially literate even though for both it's the number is not um, anywhere where it should be um, and changing that requires more women empowerment i believe um, more opportunities more resources for women to be able to get this education and simply just breaking the stigma that girls shouldn't have higher levels of education shouldn't go um, beyond simple grade schooling and just challenging the norms that have built up and that will help the next generation learn about financial literacy and just get simply the education that they need. I have um, an eight-year-old and a ten-year-old and my eight-year-old has been looking forward to get his first card because the minimum age was eight and my daughter has had a card for a while and they, she sort of now when she goes to the hairdresser, for example, she'll pay on her own. If she needs to do certain things, she'll do it own. But I think that ability to introduce the notion of spending, saving, needs and wants at an early age, regardless whether they are actually, um, it's a boy or a girl, it shouldn't be a difference. At, at the start. Of course, preferences will change in terms of what the needs and the wants are, and they may differ in terms of the cost. But ultimately, it's really understanding the difference between needs and wants and making those informed decisions as to, I can delay that gratification. And if we can introduce the concept of delayed gratification early on in our children's life, we end up in a situation where they can make better financial decisions. Because financial literacy, by the end of the day, is really about making better financial decision. And a better financial decision early on in your life probably gives you more opportunity further on to make those um, bigger ones, you know, if I can put it this way. Um, but ultimately, 
the importance of learning about it at an early age is critical. And I think many people around the world, when they look back, probably would have thought that if they had known some of these elements, they would have probably been in a better position. But it's never too late in any case to sort of ensure that your money, your future, and understanding the relationship between what you do on a daily basis and how it uh, materialized into you know, the decisions that are made are important. One of the ways in which we can think about it is actually gamification. And how do we actually make financial education accessible to individuals where they are? If online is a place where young people spend a lot of their time, how do we partner with different organizations to introduce financial education as a game? At Visa, we have a few of those games. We are launching one, I mean, relaunching one, which is called Financial Football, both for individuals and small and medium businesses. And how an individual can actually learn those basic skills while attempting to play a football game. And you can actually score goals when you answer the question correctly. So that's one aspect, the gamification. Another one, which I think would be interesting one, is to create challenges between young people. And those challenges can revolve around different things. It could be a savings challenge, for example. Um, Christmas is coming soon, or another um, Eid is becoming sometime next year. And those are times when there's a, a lot of giving that happens. But in the giving part, going back to the idea of the needs and the wants, we often struggle about that. You know? So I think it's important that we can look at these elements as an opportunity to rethink the way we engage in our communities. So Seneca has some connection challenges, but I think we still have an opportunity. If you have any questions that you can post, please do so. And then we can ensure that we have um, uh, a conversation with you. So I hope you have an opportunity to engage with us on this content, reach out and ensure that we have more people that understand the value of financial education in their lives. Thank you very much.